Located in the heart of California's Silicon Valley, Stanford University is one of the world's leading research universities. Since its opening in 1891, Stanford has been dedicated to finding solutions to big challenges and to preparing students for leadership in a complex world. Today, Stanford is a leading institution in providing not only excellence in teaching and research, but innovation in technology and operations. With SESI, Stanford Energy System Innovations, Stanford is leading sustainability by example by reducing greenhouse gas emissions from campus operations by 68%, while also conserving an additional 15% of potable water use in 2015. We decided early on that we wanted to follow the university's tradition of doing things in a bold way. So we decided to do something that no other university has tried. In fact, no other large institution has yet tried. In terms of being quite bold, defining a new plant, putting the newest technologies to use in that plant. And then, by gaining the optionality to buy electricity, we can go out and buy almost 100% green electricity. The reduction in carbon emissions is made possible through a combination of more efficient energy generation equipment, district level heat recovery to meet the majority of Stanford's heating needs, and moving from fossil fuel to a diverse energy supply mix, including renewable power sources. In 2008, Stanford began an in-depth analysis of its long-range energy demand and supply. The goal was to develop a new energy system that would be economical, flexible enough to adapt to future changes in technology, and demonstrate leadership by example in environmental sustainability. So in setting our planning horizon, we're going to project how Stanford might grow and what our energy loads might be and we're going to develop different energy systems that would supply those loads and compare the economics and sustainability. So we set up a master economic and energy model and we had two competitive design uh, efforts going on. One team was going to look at the best possible cogeneration uh, facility that could be designed and another team would then develop the, uh, the best possible heat recovery plan. We saw that, you know, given the all gas option or the all electric option and the fact that the all-electric option could be powered with renewable electricity over time. That was real the path to sustainability and it appeared to be a little more economic. So our board decided in December 2011, let's switch from gas to electricity and let's develop this facility and then let's go work on how we can green that electricity up. And they also knew that that created the most flexibility. By just buying electricity, we know if any new technological developments in electricity generation are created, we'd be in a position to take advantage of it. Through a detailed review of campus energy use, Stanford identified a significant opportunity for a new paradigm in heating and cooling. In a typical large university building, different rooms require different temperatures depending on what kind of equipment and activities are taking place. For example, labs and IT rooms with heat generating equipment require more cooling than office spaces. Since the air supplied to such a building is cooler than the air desired for the office spaces, the air to the office spaces is warmed locally. This local warming, known as the reheat process, was previously accomplished by the building hydronic system using heat provided by a campus steam loop as part of the previous cogeneration system. Interestingly enough, at Stanford, the real-time overlap of heat being collected from the campus and the heat being delivered to the campus is significant. We found a 75% overlap between our uh, concurrent heating and cooling of the campus. We have uh, this chill water system collecting all this unknown heat from buildings and we were getting rid of it to the atmosphere through evaporative cooling and that consumes about 25% of our fresh water here on campus. Today, SESI incorporates heat recovery as a key feature for meeting Stanford's long-term energy needs. In this new heat recovery design, there is interplay between the existing chilled water loop and a newly installed hot water loop. Essentially, the chilled water loop acts as a heat collection system and the hot water loop acts as the heat distribution system. Chilled water is sent out to campus to cool the buildings, and it returns to the central energy facility at a warmer temperature. The heat collected from buildings is then extracted and recovered by the new heat recovery chillers. 
The recovered heat is either stored in the thermal storage tanks for later use or redistributed in real time to the hot water loop for heating campus buildings. This new and dynamic interplay of systems is not only more efficient, greatly reducing heat loss throughout the distribution system, but also safer and substantially more sustainable. The multi-year building process involved installation of more than 22 miles of hot water pipe, along with changes to the mechanical room of 155 buildings. Through it all, construction was carefully coordinated and disruption to campus life was minimized. It's so obviously such a fantastic thing for our overall environmental sustainability, and especially when you think about the drought conditions we're in today and how much water we save. You know, there's a little bit of pain involved, but we really do get something that benefits everyone in the end. We were able to really manage it and finesse it, so there wasn't that great level of disruption that people maybe thought there was. But what they didn't know is behind the scenes, our group was working hundreds of hours in the coordination, the scheduling, notifications to make this happen. And I think that's the huge piece that most of the people on campus don't know. We met just about with every subcontractor, every equipment we bought. We met with the presidents of the companies to negotiate a price, get extended warranties, etc., with them, which was a very, um, was a moving process. Typically, we let the contractor do it, but here, we didn't. Stanford took the ownership of it. As Stanford embarked on implementing SESI, it sought to uphold the university's mission to lead by example and establish a framework that others could use as a model. From finding an autopilot system to run the plant, to designing the plant with education and aesthetics in mind, SESI embodies the key principles of innovation, efficiency, and education in all aspects of its design and operation. When I started sitting down going, geez, how would we model how this thing works so I could prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that it would work? I couldn't find any software that would do that for me. So we basically set out and decided, all right, well, let's create it ourselves. That autopilot system, as it were, that we've built to run this plant, and we're in the process of sharing that with others. The model lays out a whole year, hour by hour, of how an energy plant would run. So it's this incredibly new, powerful tool that, that many other universities and, and airports and military bases can use to see how their current system is running and see if they could do better with it. It's no mistake that this building is, is a wonderful piece of architecture. I like to think the whole building tells the story of SESI. And so we have highlighted the water tanks. Uh, we've actually put on the hot water tank uh, a wonderful sort of almost art piece. The uh, photovoltaics on the trellis also as you enter into this building uh, really reflect the commitment to finding other renewable sources of energy. The ability to look actually into the equipment as you approach the building and are in the courtyard I think is a, again a testament to how important the, the ideas and the concepts are behind the engineering. We put a lot of effort into education around sustainability challenges and solutions and around research. Um, SESI is an example of us embedding that in the way we do our business. And I think for students today, that idea of, of using this knowledge in decision making is so important, such a draw. So SESI allows us to demonstrate that within our own university. I think it says a lot about Stanford. Uh, that Stanford puts its money where its mouth is. We say we're a sustainability leader in terms of research, in terms of academic classes, but then to see this huge project, this initiative that's going to save so much water, so much energy over time, uh, I think that's really impressive um, for Stanford to be able to say it really cares and then show it in this big way. As we began this process and it touched so many parts of the university, we wanted to engage everybody. The students who feel passionately about the issues of climate change and greenhouse gases, the trustees who care about an investment of this size, uh, and the many staff, students, and, and community members whose lives would be disrupted while we began this project. Articulating the clear motivations for it, how it would save money, how it would improve the university's standing uh, in terms of environment, how it would help us dramatically accelerate our ability to reach the goals that California and the federal government have set for greenhouse gas emissions. When we put that all together, I think it was clear to everybody this was a project 
that we had to do. Just as Stanford's move to cogeneration 28 years ago represented a major shift in campus energy technology for the better, the new energy system represents a significant step forward to a more efficient and sustainable technology. SESI is yet another demonstration of Stanford's commitment to sustainability and the university's legacy of adept business investment in research and action. For more information, visit us at sustainable.stanford.edu slash SESI.